Hello, this is Chris Gannon again. Uh, I wanted to show you some little tricks that I picked up recently uh, on a job uh, that I find are quite useful um, in terms of previewing stuff with uh, Green Sox Timeline Max uh, and also faking 3D in SVG. Now SVG uh, is 2D vectors basically and it's quite hard to do 3D stuff uh, because you basically have to map um, points in 2D space to create a 3D look. Uh, but there are um, one or two ways around it and uh, I want to show you one of them and that's using uh, Green Socks Tween Max uh, and there's um, you can animate the skew on it uh, and that will sort of, it's a sort of a 3D effect but if you animate it quickly then uh, you would never know so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so first of all uh, you want to draw some kind of square that you're going to make animate. Uh, you're going to make it animate in 3D. So uh, I'm going to do a rounded square. Um, so I'm going to open up Illustrator, and um, oh, I've selected the square tool there. That won't work. Right, rounded rectangle, uh, and I'm just going to draw a rounded rectangle. Uh, okay, that'll do. Um, now. What you have to do is break it up into two pieces, the left and the right piece, and then animate the skew on each one independently. The trick is, if you if you were to do that, if you were to just chop it down the middle, uh, and then skew them, uh, you know, sort of on the X, you would end up with a big sort of V-shaped gap. So it's the trick is basically uh, to add add in uh, a point in the middle there and chop it in half and then we're gonna um, come on where are you there you are shape expanded I've never seen that before um, and I'm gonna add one there as well and then I'm gonna get this the, the uh, cutting tool and I'm gonna cut there and I'm gonna cut there okay so now I've got two separate shapes Okay. The tricky bit or the clever bit is now is to double click and go into it into one of one of the sides. Press A for is it direct direct selection tool and then just select these two and then with shift held down I'm just going to uh, lengthen it. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that they overlap. Okay? And then double click out of that. So that's now much longer much wider rather and I'm going to select the left one and do the same so double click and go into it press A for the uh, direct selection tool select these points just these points here and then just two three four five six expand that out okay uh, and I'm also going to name these so uh, this one is we'll call that screen left oops screen left and we'll call this one green right okay um, I want to keep it within the uh, confines of a 600 by 600 stage if I was to select this and just copy it which I've just done and then go into my go into my scratch pad which is just a sort of an empty SVG file so I can edit stuff in there, sort of an interim edit if I paste it in you'll notice that the width of the view box i.e. The, the stage in which it thinks it sits is the basically the bounding box of this so however big this is if we look at how big this is it's 396 by 266 you'll notice that it's done 397 by 267 uh, which is not what we want we want it sitting in a 600 by 600 box okay look at this view box here look so any animations would get clipped off uh, on the on the, the top and the bottom so if you animated that uh, those screen left and screen right inside it, it would get clipped off. So what we need to do to get around that is to create a rectangle, uh, just a different colour. Any colour will do, it doesn't matter, just a different colour. Uh, and get rid of the stroke. Uh, and then just draw a rectangle which is the same dimensions as, and then just put that underneath, same dimensions as the document or stage, our board. So now copy that. We don't need this green box, but um, so if I if I if I leave that there actually, and I'll show you what comes in now. 
So now we've got um, the two paths and we've also got a rectangle that fills the stage 600 by 600 which has forced the view box to be 600 by 600 which is what we want. So get rid of the rectangles, we don't need that, we just use that as a <clears throat> as a sort of a, you know, a sizing mechanism. Uh, and then we will uh, get rid of this nonsense that Illustrator adds, we don't know why it adds that. And I'm also going to change these to a class. I would do a find and replace, but my screen recording thing is, in fact, it's at the bottom. Look, I would, I would normally do a, a search and replace uh, ID equals class and whatever, and, and then underscore one and replace it with nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we'll copy that. So we've got class equal screen left, class equal screen right. We've got rid of the rectangle. Copy that. Go into code pen. I've got a new code pen here, and I paste everything inside a div so I can center it. Paste it in, and we've got our rounded box. I'll talk about some uh, a way of previewing this in a minute. I've got some stuff set up here which I'll talk about in a minute. Frame preview and there's uh, I've set up a timeline max here with a little if statement in there. But I'll talk and, and uh, a mouse move on the body. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Right. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we've got a timeline max instance set up here. We're going to go. We're going to do timeline, which is my instance dot from. And we're going to say I could I could uh, create. In fact, I will. Do you know what I'm going to do? That I'm going to go up here. I create a little function. I actually nick this off um, Jack or Carl from Greensock. It's a brilliant idea. It's just just a, a shortened shortened way of of getting um, instant. You know, uh, getting references to DOM elements. So I'm going to say screen left equals select. Um, dot screen left. There you go. Now I've got a, an instance here. I'm going to just copy that over, and then we do screen right as well. So we've got we've got references to them. Okay. So we'll start with screen left. Go back down to here. So we're going to do from screen left from. We we'll do it over two seconds, and we're going to say skew x, and we're going to start with something like minus forty. Okay. Um, and we are also don't worry about this yet. Oh, I've already got this. I've already got my mouse move thing set up. Let's just turn that off for a sec. Okay, so it's all being clipped at the moment, but don't worry about that because we're going to change the transform origin of it because at the moment the origin's at the top and we don't want it to be at the top. Uh, and we're going to copy that over and we're going to do the same for screen right. Right, but because it's on the right, we we want the skew to be a positive number. Uh, notice that they're happening one after another. We can just make sure that the screen right happens at the same time as screen left by just doing minus equals two seconds, which is how long this one lasts for. So basically, you're saying this animation please happen at the same time this one starts by going back the same duration as this <clears throat> animation. Okay, next thing to fix is we just want to set the transform origin between max dot set and we want to just put it, pass in an array of screen left comma and screen right. We, we want both of those to be have a transform origin, i.e. The, the pivot point around which it uh, rotates or skews or whatever. 50% on the X, that's fine in the middle. Um, and 100% uh, so you now notice that they're now rotating around this bottom axis. Um, okay. So, next. Um, I think that might be a little bit too much actually. Oops. They're crossing over too much. Ah. All right, let's try let's try something like 20. It's still crossing over a bit, isn't it? One 
thing to add as well. We're gonna we're gonna squash it down so it goes from a scale y of zero. Oh, there you go. In fact, now we can push that back up to forty, so it's a bit more exaggerated. And there you have a sort of a pseudo three D effect, or like a laptop. I was basically doing an animation of a laptop lid, uh, and. Um, if you animate it fast enough, you can sort of get you can sort of get away with it. What we're going to do is also the sort of laptop lid that, that, that's sort of coming up from from uh, the distance towards you. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it we're going to continue that animation down so that it looks like it's closing. So we're going to oh, hello no. So what I just did there was I just copied over this animation yeah, and I'm going to do a two. So it's going to go two, and it's going to go two forty. The screen left's going to go two forty, and the screen right's going to go to minus forty. Yeah, so that should look like it's sort of going forward now, and it also scales on the Y back down. And that's a pretty cool three D effect, really, given there isn't any three D. Um, a few things, a few things we can do to sort of sell the shot a bit more if you see what I mean turn that we're gonna we're gonna do a time scale which means we're just gonna speed the entire thing up so if that's part of an animation I think that's 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 not bad really to sort of to suggest some kind of 3d 3d rotation I think it also probably needs if we go and select all of these and we're going to do an ease on it. We're going to do an uh, an ease a power uh, two dot ease in out. So let's see how that works. So open close, open close. Yeah, this is not bad, yeah. Well, I think that's not bad anyway. Uh, right. Okay. So often I find that um, I've got very very long virtual virtual timelines. I mean, there is no, you know, there's no. IDE and there's no editor or whatever in uh, in code pen or HTML5 or anything. Uh, so the, the method I use is uh, scrubbing through the timeline uh, with my mouse so that I can very very quickly and accurately make sure that transitions are happening if I'm trying to line stuff up. I don't have to go through the entire animation, uh, especially if you know if I'm trying to line something up, you know, two graphics up at the end of a big long animation. Uh, I don't have to keep waiting for it uh, to, to play and then maybe I've missed it and I have to go wait until it goes back to the end. So what I do is uh, I set a variable frame preview um, which at the moment is false uh, and frame preview uh, is uh, are you saying uh, do you want to preview it frame by frame? No I don't at the moment I'm just playing it. Uh, and in my timeline max I say uh, are you paused? Uh, sorry I set it to be paused if frame preview is true, uh, then um, pause it. If it's not, don't pause it. I so so if I'm not doing it frame by frame, then just play it and loop it, and then repeat minus one just means loop it. So uh, and then the next crucial part is uh, on the body. I set a mouse move function. Uh, if frame prove if frame preview is off, then don't do anything with the mouse. Otherwise. Tell the timeline to seek a percentage of where your mouse is across the entire uh, of the stage. Um, so it basically is seek the x position of your mouse divided by. I, I change this to some arbitrary number sometime. It depends on the sort of granularity I want. I mean, if it's um, if I want it to be very, if it's a very long animation, I'll change that to a, sh a smaller number so that I can whiz through it quite quickly. Or if I want to be very, very um, specific about a, a, a certain point, I'll make that make that a longer number, and then multiplied by the duration of the timeline. And so let's let's have a look at that. So if I just if I turn that to make to that true. So now it's saying uh, if frame preview is on, pause it. So it's paused at the moment. Uh, and if frame preview isn't on then don't do anything. Well it is on so now it's saying wherever my mouse is seek to uh, a percentage of the timeline 
the timeline's time, if you see what I mean. So now as I move my mouse along, I can I can sort of preview it and I can go backwards and forwards. Uh and I can sort of see how my uh how my animation's doing and I can go and just do some little tweaks if I want. Um I can maybe maybe I'll make the make that more pronounced. It'll probably start overlapping now, but if I make that more pronounced so it refreshes and as it closes you'll notice I've messed up there and it sort of splits too much does it yeah it starts to split so I change that to 60 see how that goes yeah there's a little tiny split in it there so 50 so that's about as exaggerated as I can get on the fake 3d so they, it's just a nice quick way of uh, of previewing what you're doing without having to play the whole animation and uh, it's a fairly cool 3D effect. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.